What up? It's your boy T-Bird and reaction today is music Monday. So since there's no episode of uh, Rhythm Real Light nor uh, any new episode of uh, DJ Premier, uh, so what's up? I saw, I came across this video right here. I thought it would be a good video to check out in place of them, either one. So without further ado, this is called From Idea Idea Generation. This any studio, The Alchemist, Finding the Right Sample, and it produces a great song. You know, Alchemist is one of my favorite producers of all time, though. He has a mass class. I was curious of possibly checking it out if I ever want to do it, though, as well, too. Um, just trying to hold back with some money because you know, we get the little one coming. So, anyway, we're gonna check out. Um, I didn't stop freezing. Um, I can wait. We're gonna check out. Yeah, here we go. We're gonna check out. Um, in the studio, Alchemist, finding the right samples, producing a great song. Well, let's get it. Do you have like a specific process? In the early days, when I first started, I was always doing the sample first. So I would listen to a record and I would find the sample. I, I'd get it going and looped up kind of simply and then I would approach it like a drummer. I, but I, I would maybe, sometimes I used to beatbox it. Mm, After okay. a while, I like felt like it was getting kind of boring. Like uh, as a producer, okay. not the, the end result was cool, but, but just at, for the, pro the process. Yeah, it became too predictable. And I remember I would go see Premier, and sometimes he'd be making a beat, and he would always have like a drum sound. Mm -hmm. Maybe the kicks weren't even in it, but it was like some structure of a drum and a tempo. And so over the years, I started doing that. We're like, let me get a drum going, or like a pattern, or some tempo, so that way I have like a starting point. And then as I'm mixing in records, it becomes more unpredictable if it makes sense because mm -hmm. you know, I don't really work with the computer programs where you could like make everything on time and then key but I kind of like the limitation of playing records and having to beat and I, I'm playing this record it's a whole different time and a key I'm playing the drum I'm just sitting back now listening boom that was the moment spin it back okay a lot of the records I sample the, the moment might just happen for five seconds Right, and the whole song could be not even an enjoyable song. Yep. It just might be a Facts. two bar moment mm -hmm. or an intro or an outro. Is it Dave Dave Porter? Yeah, he knows that too, especially when uh we go the sample to we gonna make with Jay Kiss though with this uh Sam Johnson music. Um, that one was tough. My music, that was tough. Like he got that little bit apart from that whole song. Like you hear the song, the whole song is very long and there's that one little distinct part he picked up to make uh Jay Kiss we gonna make it. The shit that has like the LLB <coughs> and the, you know, it's the like, like, is over. Yes, the Masquerade David is over. Porter. Mm -hmm. There's like eight different samples in it, but they're all totally different and they all jumped out to different producers at mm -hmm. different times over like 10 years. Incredible to, to even make a piece of music like that. Just have people all interpreting it differently. It's like, uh, yeah, that's the beauty of sampling. <laughs> I'll do I'll just make all the sounds work once I get the beat going then I'll just whatever's here I'll, I'll okay. make it all work just you know what I mean one of those salads that you make out of all the fucking leftover pieces whatever's in the refrigerator put it in the mystery salad mm -hmm. that's the part <laughs> that's why you the man yo those noises samples pretty much stuff I made or found or you know mm -hmm. stuff from a garbage can that you you know secondhand dust it off give it a new shellac nice put it in soup and you get a new new mixture mm -hmm. it's like all different textures so when you blend them all it shouldn't be um, easily dissectable with your ear or it's like oh that's over there that's over there that's the thing about the MP it doesn't blend shit as well as the ASR used to because the, the main outputs of the ASR kind of already had this type of coloring mm. and sound that gave it some limitations in a, in a sound. Where this is really raw, it's just like, psh, there's your sample, there's your drums, there's your sounds. So you, it, you gotta be crafty with how you EQ and compress and mix beats with the MP in order to make it sound like a real soup, mm. where you're not looking at the soup and seeing every um, ingredient. So, yeah, 
yeah, that's that, that's always the trick for me with this to blend them all or your ears. But the more dissected on first listen, even some of my favorite beats before, I never realized how intricate they were because I I was a fan of the song. I remember hearing some Exile beats from the Blue and Exile album later, like damn, that's crazy. Like the all right, sorry if for example, look like I know the encoder on overload, the sound was coming up. So. Detail and how we programmed the shit, and it was real. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was like some of it I didn't hear till I heard the instrumental later. So I get it, you know? Those are the details you gotta do to make something to have character and be unique. How do you know when a beat is done? My friend, who was a painter, like a really incredible artist, I asked him the same question. I was watching him paint one day. I'm like, how do you know when the painting's done? He's like, I get emotional. And I was like, it took me a minute to understand it. Wow. And I, then I kind of thought about it in relation to what I do. I don't get emotional, but I know what he meant. Like, as far as, like, it's like the end of a relationship. It's okay. like, fuck. Because you love what you're doing. Like, this is it. This is the last. I'm not adding anything else. It's done. Cool. All right, so one, I'm gonna, um, I'm definitely gonna subscribe to this, to this uh, channel here for sure. To, um, check out and check out anything else they got on as well too. See, so any other like videos like that as well too. But um, this was a good little insight as well too. Just as good as the Rhythm Led, the uh, DJ Premier. So with sub stories as well too, though. Like it's definitely because I um like I say I'm definitely like getting heavy in this beat making thing as well too. Like I say, even just be a hobby, I just make beats of my own, put it on SoundCloud, call a day, don't be and not be famous about it. But you know, I like to get my beats known. But you know, I got a lot. I feel like I still got, I got a lot of work to do. But um, this was a good video for sure. So um, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Brush signing off. One love.